Josh Rathaport here with another micro math lesson for you. Now you know in the last lesson we learned a really cool shortcut for finding the GCF, the greatest common factor, when you're given two numbers, all right? And today what I want to do is take that same shortcut, tweak it a little bit, and extend it so you can use that same basic idea to find the GCF for three or more numbers, for as many numbers as your teacher, text, or textbook might throw at you, okay? So, it's a very useful thing to know because you have to find the GCF pretty often in math. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> First thing I wanna do is just review the key idea that was at the heart of the shortcut. So, the key idea is a concept called the gap, all right? And what is the gap? Well, the gap is simply the distance between the two numbers whose GCF you're trying to find. So we can say it's the distance between the two numbers. So for example, let's say you're trying to find the GCF for 8 and 14. Well, 14 minus 8 is 6, so you'd say the gap in that case is 6. It's that simple, just the difference. Now, one nice thing about the gap, as you recall, I called it cool fact number one, is that the gap establishes the upper limit for the GCF, the upper limit. And what that means is that once you know what the gap is, you can say, hey, I don't need to check any numbers larger than that because that's as big as the GCF could possibly be. Okay, so that's kind of nice right there. It tells you when you can stop checking numbers. But there's something even better than that, which is this. Cool fact number two is that the gap also limits the number of GCF candidates that you need to check out. The way that works is this. Once you know the gap, all you have to do is find the factors of the gap, the numbers that go into the gap. And those factors are the only numbers that can possibly go into both of your numbers that you're finding the GCF for. So let's do a quick example just to review. Let's say you were finding the GCF for 21 and 27. Well, First of all, you'll notice these two numbers are six apart, so the gap is six. And that means right there that the upper limit for those two numbers, for the, for the GCF of those two numbers, is six. We don't have to check anything larger than six. So the GCF candidates for these two numbers, here's where it's kind of cool, cool fact number two, is all we have to check are the factors of six. And the factors of six in descending order are six and then three and then two, these are the numbers that go into six, right? So all we have to check are these numbers. So we ask ourselves first, does six go into 21? No, it doesn't. So six cannot be the GCF. Then we check three, does three go into 21? Well, of course, from our times table, we, times tables, we know it does, it goes in seven times. And then does three go into 27? Of course it does, it goes in nine times. So three goes into both numbers, so three is the GCF. Because we put these numbers in descending order, the factors in descending order, we know that we don't have to check anything smaller than three. So we're done. As soon as we find one number that goes into both of our two numbers under consideration, we are done. So that's a quick review of the shortcut. Now, let's try to extend that shortcut for three or more numbers, finding the GCF for three or more numbers. Now, to do that, we're going to need two kind of new ideas. So that's what we've got here in the blue section. And I want to just say one thing about this blue section before we go right into it, which is that some of the ideas here might be possibly a little bit confusing as I explain it the first time. And if that's the case, don't worry, don't stress out, it's okay. Because when we apply these ideas to an actual example, everything's going to make perfect sense. So don't stress out if it feels a little confusing right now. But here we go. New idea number one is that it turns out there's another number when you're searching for the GCF. There's another number that plays the same basic role as the gap. And the other number that does that is the smallest number of the numbers under consideration. The smallest number. So for example, let's say we're trying to find the GCF for 14, 20, and 30. Well, obviously, the smallest number is 14. And that means right there that 14 is going to be the upper limit for the GCF. And 14 is also going to tell us which 
numbers could possibly be the GCF, which would be the candidates. They would be the factors of 14, which are 14, 7, and 2. So we've got another number that plays the same role as the gap. Okay, then there's new idea number two, which is this. When you're seeking, when you're looking for the GCF of three or more numbers, now you're going to have not just one gap, you're going to have two or more gaps. Okay, so for example, let's say you're looking for the GCF of 14, 20, and 30. First, you have a gap between 14 and 20. That's 6. 20 minus 14 is 6. Then you have the other gap between 20 and 30. That's 10. So now you have two gaps. And you can use both of those gaps, or just either of them, to winnow down or limit the number of GCF candidates. You know, at first, when, when I explain this to people, sometimes they think that, oh, the more gaps that we've got, the more confusing or complicated the situation is. Actually, the opposite is true. The more gaps you've got, the more ways you have to limit the number of possible candidates for the GCF, as you'll see when we do the example uh, just now. Okay, so now we're going to do an example that will hopefully make this all make perfect sense. Here's how it works. The problem here is to find the GCF for three numbers, 16, 28, and 44. Okay, quick little new term I'm going to use is the term limiting numbers. The limiting numbers is a term that means either the gap numbers or the smallest numbers, because as we just saw, the smallest numbers, the smallest number plays the same role as the gap numbers do. They're all limiting numbers. They limit the candidates for the GCF. Okay, so what we do is we take our three numbers, 16, 28, 44, and we write out our limiting numbers. Just to keep it simple, uh, we'll start out by doing the gaps. So the gap from 16 to 28 is 12. So we write that here. That's the limiting number for that pair of numbers. Then for 28 to 44, the gap is 16. We write that limiting number there. And then the third limiting number is the smallest number, 16. That goes right there. Then in, we have basically a three-row approach, you'll see. We have the numbers first, the second row is the limiting numbers, and the third row, we're writing down the factors of those limiting numbers, so the factors of the second row. All right, what are the factors of 16? They are 16, 8, 4, and 2. What are the factors of 12? They are 12, 6, 4, 3, and 2. And again, same factors of 16, same as here, so I don't have to repeat them. Now, notice this. It doesn't matter which set of factors you start with. You'll always hit the GCF. This is one of the nice things about this technique. So we can start with these, or we can start with these. But since this is a smaller set of numbers, notice, I'm going to start with these. And that's one of the nice things about this shortcut. You can choose a set of factors that's smaller. So what we do here is we say, here are the possible numbers for the GCF. So the first one is 16. Does 16 go into 16? Yes. Does 16 go into 28? No. So then forget 16. It's out. Then we try the next factor, 8. Does 8 go into 16? Yes. Does 8 go into 28? No. 8's out. Then we try 4. Does 4 go into 16? Yes. Does 4 go into 28? Yes. 7 times. Does 4 go into 44? Yes. 11 times. 4 is the GCF. We're done. Now, as I said, it doesn't matter which column we start with. Notice if we had done this other column first, we would have excluded 12. 12 doesn't go into 16. We would have excluded 6. 6 doesn't go into 16. And boom, we would have landed on 4, which goes into all three. Either way, we're going to hit the GCF. So that's how the shortcut works when you've got three or more numbers. It doesn't matter how many numbers you've got. This, this trick, this shortcut, is always going to work. Next, I want to show you the same shortcut with four numbers. We're finding the GCF for 18, 30, 48, and 72. So here are our numbers in the first row. 18, 30, 48, 72 are limiting numbers. First, let's do our gaps from 18 to 30. That would be 12. 30 to 48, that's 18. 48 to 72, that's 24. And of course, we put 18 as our first limiting number because it's the smallest number. Now we look at the factors of these limiting numbers. So the factors of 18 are 18, 9, 6, 3, 2. Factors of 12 are 12, 6, 
four, three, two. 18 is a repeat, but I'll have to write it again. Factors of 24, 24, 12, eight, six, four, three, two. Okay, so uh, again, it doesn't matter which column we start with. Um, just for fun this time, let's start with the factors of 12 because that's a nice, sort of one of the smaller ones. So we'll start there. So we look at 12. Does 12 go into 18 right off the bat? No, we forget about 12. Does six go into 18? Yes. Does six go into 30? Yes. Does six go into 48? Yes. And does six go into 72? Yes, it does. Six goes into every number. Six is the GCF. We're done. We didn't have to look at the other columns at all. And that's all there is to it. Now, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And, uh, you know, this is, as far as I know, um, my own original idea. I came up with it after playing around with these ideas uh, for my tutoring. And I like to try to come up with original approaches to math situations, math challenges that people have to face. I like to come up with ways that are easier than the standard ways that they're presented to us in school. Um, so if you like that idea of learning new ways of doing things, um, ways that kind of make you think about math a little bit differently, please subscribe to this channel. Feel free to let other people know about it. I'd like to build my viewership. And uh, if you have any comments about what I've presented here, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'm going to present a few extra problems for you guys to do. I'll do, give you three or four additional problems and then the answers after the problems. So hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video.